this is indeed a great opportunity for us to learn how Motorola Solutions has expanded and grown its operations in India. Motorola Solutions takes pride in saying that it does things differently, radically differently. Could you give us a few examples of how we do that? Sure. Uh, as opposed to creating technology and for technology's sake often and then trying to force fit a place for that technology out in the world. So we play in vertical markets. We literally walk a day or a year or sometimes a decade in the shoes of our customers to understand what are their business processes, where are the pain points in those business processes, how can we help, how can we take friction out of the system. And then we go back and we talk to our technologists about the problem to be solved and we hopefully create unique solutions that bring real utility to that problem at the end of the day. Give you a couple examples. Wearable computing is a, is a hot trend that's being talked about. Uh, Motorola Solutions came out with the first mobile computer in the wearable category in the 93 to 1995 time frame. We worked with UPS and then with Federal Express and what we have is a laser scanner that, that scans barcodes on an index finger, on, 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 a, on a ring finger, with a wearable computer with a lithium ion battery, a display, wireless keypad that cut, uh, uh, that, that increased productivity by about 2x in the operations. And that's one of our most successful products. Um, since then, we have launched a head mounted computer. So it goes back to what we said, Bob and I said earlier. Rarely will you come across companies where from the executive ranks to the design team, to the sales team, to the technical engineers, you will find us most days walking warehouses, walking airport tarmacs, walking retail stores, walking shop floors with our customers trying to understand what they're trying to do and then going back into a concept like wearable computing that MIT Media Lab was dreaming about uh, in the early 90s. And we monetized that offering with, uh, and, and delivered return on investment and benefits to customers like I mentioned, UPS and Federal Express, uh, and other customers in Asia as well. So those are some examples. It is great to hear that your folks walk tarmacs, warehouses, shop floors, and figure out what the customers want. But in very large corporations, when these teams come in with these ideas and they propose innovative solutions, more often than not, they hit the winds of resistance from the overall structure, hierarchy, bureaucracy which surrounds them. So how do you break through this, this inevitable uh, structure and process? which might slow down innovations and, and new products. It's, it's a struggle in Motorola, and it's a struggle, I think, in every large successful company. Uh, there are a thousand lights of ideas, and you can fund only a finite amount uh, in a given year. So I'll start off by saying, greatly acknowledge that, and it's a challenge. We have uh, a very mature portfolio management process, where we invest in our core markets, we invest in adjacent markets, and then we invest in incubation. And when the year is coming to a close like it is now, we look at the year that has just gone past and the next year, and we look at what we did right and what we missed. So th there are processes that manage it. Processes go only so far. Uh, what, we, what we do is uh, we spend Again, a lot of time with our innovation teams. And uh, we do give some empowerment to our local teams to take nascent ideas and develop them further. There is a very compelling uh, local idea being developed over the last 12 months that we unveiled yesterday, which changes the game of mobility. And that was an idea, the genesis of it came in through the offices and cubicles within Motorola as we looked at business operations. And all we funded was a very modest amount a year ago, less than $200,000. Most of the programs are multi-million dollars. And what we are seeing is this very early idea now has taken shape. 
uh, and that's one way of, of, uh, of uh, addressing and letting uh, grassroots ideas foster, take shape, uh, before uh, stepping on it and killing it. But Dr. Raghunath, it's, it's, it's a struggle, it's a challenge on a daily basis. And, and decisions cannot be made in ivory towers. They have to be made around where innovation teams work. You know, at the end of the day, it's trying to act small even within a big environment. Um, and again, I think he hit uh, the key points. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities that crop up. We couldn't possibly fund them all, but the ones that seem to be the most appealing, it's sometimes a function of spreading a, a small amount of money to progress the idea a little bit further, nurture it, test it in market, see if there's as much resonance when we actually have something to put in front of a customer as a prototype as there was seemingly at the PowerPoint level, uh, and then deciding from there. But uh, to Girish's point, it is, it's, it's tough. It's, uh, particularly if it's a concept that is foreign, you know, to the current way of uh, current business, if you will. The corporate antibodies want to come out and oftentimes they want to kill that idea off. So it's, uh, it is a constant struggle, but it's, I think doing it right is what s separates really those that succeed from those that don't. Will we in India see 4G enabled ambulances and, and, and cops and what do you think about the hurdles which might stop us from, from getting there? Indian public safety agencies will, you know, in the near future uh, have the latest 4G broadband enabled technology tools, especially looking at what happened in Bombay, the tragic terror attacks a few years ago. And imagine if the public safety agencies there had broadband communications where voice, data, video, and multimedia were shared. Now, uh, worldwide regulatory bodies are looking at uh, how to make broadband available in a ubiquitous way so that it is distributed and it is available for public safety agencies. A nuance there is uh, there should be special access, special frequencies, special channels of broadband for public safety agencies because at a time of crisis, public networks get uh, burdened with consumers calling in. The technology is there today. Mobility, head-mounted display, dispatch systems, command centers, uh, uh, customers, public safety agencies using tablets uh, to, to look at uh, premises internally, externally. Uh, the systems capability is where Motorola comes in. We, we take the bandwidth that's available and we deploy mobility tools that, that, uh, that take the best in the dispatch center and make that multimedia experience available for uh, police, for fire, and for ambulance services, and ensuring that there is interoperability amongst those. So, so we have to be optimistic that our public safety agencies in India and other parts of the world uh, will have these highly required uh, technology solutions that are available today, deployed in due course. We are very pleased to be here. Uh, Indian, Indian Institute of uh, Management Bangalore is, uh, is uh, the top school in India but also in the world. So it's a privilege to be here and thank you very much for your kindness to invite us. Absolutely. Thank you very much Mr. Girish and Mr. Sanders for your time and your excellent insights.